Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Make sure you subscribe to all three channels, Hearts Home, as well as this is the newest channel. And we were uh, able to get three videos up there in the past uh, three, three days or so. So do go and check them out if you need a break from all the you know, chaos in the world. And we want to thank our newest patrons, Shans, Judy, Annette, and James. Thank you guys so much for your supports. So Houston tied the hottest day on record, 109 degrees actual temp. Y yeah, you know, where, where we are, uh, again, I looked and I think that we've had two days out of the last 25 that did not break 100. So like 23 days uh, over 100 degrees actual temps. The feels like have been like 115, 116 typically. And here you see that heat dome. Heat dome steers storms. Now we know there is such a thing as harp. And of course there is absolutely weather control geoengineering out there. And steering uh, the jet stream would be part of what you would want to do if you wanted to lay the foundations for a, a certain pattern to come into effect. And that pattern also was what enabled uh, that first tropical storm to hit South uh, California and, and forever. The technology in play is really the difference maker. Yeah, there are natural factors, but there's technology and we know this is real. We know this is real. There's declassified documents that show it. We also know that in some places the the border is welded wide open. We also know tens of millions of people have illegally crossed the border into the country. We have so many reports of Chinese uh military age people that have come into the country we can see that world war three is is really it, it's just right on the horizon and we have more and more fires this is the marathon petroleum refinery in garyville this is garyville louisiana and if you are unaware of it you know louisiana this the area between new orleans and along the coast, all the way over to Houston, is just loaded with uh, ripe targets. Ripe targets. And, you know, this is my take on it, and everybody is obviously entitled to your own opinion. You know, I don't think that, that really there's any um, so-called safe spots. I, I think there's going to be vulnerability everywhere and right now maybe people are thinking well where can i go where can i go to be safe well this is just a very difficult time and we're gonna have to stay prepared remain prepared do what we can have your essentials ready you know have that list of five things that you cannot live without and know where those things are and have that ready to go don't forget to take care of your pets have things ready for your pets um you know, we're all in this together and all we can do is really watch out for each other's back, keep reminding one another what what we can do because there is a lot out there that we have no control over, absolutely no control. Energetically, you can create domes of protection over your house and many times that will work and I definitely suggest everyone do that right now. Um, but also have the backup ready because we just don't know what's what's planned. Well, we got an idea what's planned, but we don't know exactly where they're going to trigger what. Um, you know, I, I felt like the stretch on I-10 uh, is, is mo in, again, in between, especially in between, say, New Orleans to Houston is prime target. Houston is such an important port, such an important port. And, you know, the war is, is obviously ready to go and expand outwards with all the uh, people that are in this country and all the sabotage that's being done and yet you still have people saying well this is just simply climate change oh, gosh you know the sad fact is people believe that if you get enough of the people that are 
are, are always spouting this, you, you'll get a good percentage of the population that doesn't know any better and just, oh, okay. And, and, and that's why we're in this mess, because people, unfortunately, have been trusting the media, trusting all the official sources. You know, this is um, a nasty fire, and obviously it's going to have an effect on the environment. It's going to have an effect on people's health. We've seen so many of these uh, evacuations uh, were done. When you see Garyville again, it's right in between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, and you have Lafayette over here. So most of the population, the vast majority of the population in Louisiana is right along this stretch. And, you know, again, this is a key area. And it's not just there as well. There's others that are on fire that we're going to be taking a look at. So chemical leak, fire reported, Louisiana refire, refinery, evacuation ordered for people nearby. Uh, there's been a lot of fires. This is Maryville, Louisiana. Maryville, by the way, is is kind of right along this line. And we've noticed these events before when we were pointing out in um, Ohio and with the uh, the whole situation that happened in East Palestine right there on the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania. And then you had all these series of different uh, train derailments and fires and stuff. They were all like right off highways. I mean, they were all so close to each other. You can almost imagine that there's just, you know, uh, a platoon <laughs> that's out there of sleeper cells and they're just going to one spot driving on the highway, get off an hour or so later, jump, cause more chaos. And, and it, it's not necessarily the same group because there's so many in the country right now. And so when you, when you look at these areas, it's right along 10. There's fires going on right now in multiple places and even into uh, Texas. As we see, this is in Evans, Louisiana. Just again, right on up the road a little bit farther. So Maryville, Evans, you know, the petroleum fire going on. Uh, look at it. I mean, it's it's such, such a short little uh, jaunt. Now, could these fires be uh, related? Absolutely. I think they are related. Now, does it mean it's just embers traveling miles away? No, there's gaps in between. It's not entirely on fire. And this is Jasper, Texas. This is an, another one that's ongoing, as you can see here in Jasper. And Jasper's, again, right on the border. So, you know, when you look, we were talking about fire, fire, and then, of course, in between Baton Rouge and, and New Orleans, another fire, and then Jasper's right here, another fire. Yeah, I do think it's all in interrelated. How many people cross this? How many people cross the border? How many tens of millions illegally have crossed the border? So even if it's just, you know, one half of 1% that have some intentions of lighting the world on fire, at least a, a certain corner, it's still a massive amount of people. And here you see the Greece minister has labeled those responsible as arsonist scum after a staggering 79 people were arrested over the fires. We don't have a climate crisis. We have an arsonist crisis. Yes. Yes. You know, and they, they just keep shouting it from the rooftops. But we know what's going on. You know, the same thing up in Canada as well. A lot of people have noted things, and then now we're noticing, too, that it seems like there's a lot of uh, things that survive the fires in Maui, and they all tend to be blue. <laughs> yeah, there's reasons for all this as we look at a fire tornado, a fire NATO up there in Canada, and, you know, all the coincidences going on in Lahaina, Maui, so the Hawaiian governor, Josh Green, already had articles written about implementing Agenda 2030. You can't make it up. No, because it's all, it's all coordinated effort. There are so many tentacles to the power structure. You know, it's, it's, it's not just some Freemasons. It's not just the Illuminati. 
again, it, it's not just uh, the Davos crowd. It, no, it's not just those meeting at Bohemian Grove. It's not just those that are being initiated into the skull and bones. Oh, it's they're they're just a few of hundreds and hundreds of organizations actively recruiting people to take part in this. It's and it's all over the globe. It, it is. And, and it's just um, something where we have to really control our our anger because we know how deliberate it is. And with these deliberate acts, I mean, it's so easy to want to be angry and spiteful and lash out and, you know, do something about it in some way, shape or form. But that's something that we really have to hold off on. We need to hold our center. We need to stay grounded. We need to help those that we can. We need to help ourselves first and then we need to help our neighbors and then we need to help our towns and we need to organize in that way. Uh, you see, if you could see the quote behind there, it's it's the governor with a quote. I am already looking for ways for the state to acquire Lahaina. That says it all. You know, that says it all. We we get it. So many of us do get it to completely and totally. We we get it. We see the big picture, and you know, it's a clear picture. And you know, a lot of people have interesting little uh, photos and videos that show curious lights, curious objects. Uh, you know, there's just tons of them. There's tons of them. We understand that technology is out there. It's just part of the agenda, and it's going to be challenging. And, um, you know, the guides did come through last night just saying, really what's going on these are all last acts of desperation but these last acts of desperation it, it, don't think it's just about almost over it is proportionately when you're talking about thousands of years <laughs> but we still have a period to go again just look to the dates they've given us uh, agenda 2030 that gives you a real clue as to when a key date is those d-e-a-g-e-l numbers as we see over here, at least 30 reportedly missing after a house collapses in Germany due to flooding. Because, yes, we have the fires. And where we don't have the fires, we got this, you know, crazy, insane flooding. And again, the U.S. was using technology in the Vietnam War 50 to 60 years ago. 60 years ago, yeah. that To flood out villages in Vietnam. So this is nothing new. It's just being utilized on a higher degree. And as you see, oh, oh, they have a new version of Fetterman. No, well, you know, again, these are just actors. And if the original actor leaves the show, they'll get an actor to replace them. Can we understand that? I mean, I know you guys get that. How many times have you been watching a show and all of a sudden there's a new actor playing a position and it just doesn't feel right? Well, something's a little wrong with Fetterman. You know, I think they tried real hard with the, the one, two, three that have the ears, you know, or four. There's actually four they did okay with, with the ears. But still, I mean, gosh, it's which one is which one is the real one? I really don't know. But is this not an insult? That's my question. Is this not an insult? I, I got to say, I think number one, this one, this one feels like the original. And, you know, again, does it really matter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's just a CONS piracy. You can still look and type in chemtrail and you'll still see it's a conspiracy. No, it's a fact. It's it's a fact. It's been a fact for a long time. It's declassified. Yeah, I guess the pilot was just lost. <laughs> they think we're absolute idiots. They think we're absolute idiots, but, you know, people are waking up. You, you can't pull the wool over everybody's eyes. And many of us have known for decades exactly what's going on. So, yeah, the guides did come through and said that they are basically acting out of desperation because their time is short and they're not going to succeed um, entirely because, of course, you know, these are the greediest individuals on the planet that we are watching not the puppy, of course. He's just having fun. He's making his own game. He has nobody to play with him, so he's going to play with himself, and he's having a great old time. 
That's a wise one. That's a good one. Just working on himself, doing what he needs to do to make himself happy. But yeah, you know, the the last when when you're in a an abusive relationship, it's the very end of it that is the most dangerous and that's where they can pull out all the stops and that's why we really need to take care of ourselves right now stay focused on yourself yes help people where you can but really you can't do a whole lot for anyone else but take care of you that's the best way to help others but do talk to your neighbors friends family do do weather this storm by staying outside of the system as much as you possibly can. And I think there is a realization, too, that um, just like a spoiled brat will, you know, it sometimes knock everything over and then grab their toys and say, nobody's playing with my toys and walk, walk away. Well, you know, the technology is their toys. That's their toys that they've used to. Uh, entice us into you know everything that we see going on right now so they are doing the same Cindy was picking up a vision of um, a being up in a ship and the being was like giving orders to burn as much as possible and the being wasn't human but giving orders uh, that would make their way on on down the line because again a lot of you guys I know the vast majority of the people that follow the channel regularly understand that this this is truly a galactic war that's underway and term dimensional as well definitely as always guys thanks for your support on ko-fi and patreon much love god bless and namaste namaste